Good morning and uh, welcome to the meeting of the subcommittee on zoning and franchising. I'm uh, Francisco Moya, the chair of the subcommittee, and today we are joined by uh, Councilmember Carlina Rivera, uh, Councilman Barry Grudenchek, and Councilmember Steve Levin. Today we will be holding a hearing on um, one item, LU44, the Barano Sidewalk Cafe located at 26 Broadway in Councilmember uh, Levin's District in Brooklyn. This is an application for a uh, revocable consent for the use of the city-owned sidewalk to operate and use a new uh, unenclosed sidewalk cafe with 17 tables and 34 chairs for a two-year term. We will also be voting on LU36, the 21 East 12th Street parking garage, and the LU37 and the 35 Underhill rezoning. I am now opening the public hearing to LU44, the Barano Side Walk Cafe. Um, and we have uh, Patricia Sullivan, Zachary Wiener, Al. Demelio and Jonathan Sol Salimanzadi. Salimanzadi, is that it? Great. <laughs> and uh, we are also joined by Council Member uh, Reynoso. Good morning, my name is Patricia Sullivan and I'm here with Mozzarella Holdings from 26 Broadway. And we are here to present on the Unenclosed Sidewalk Cafe um, for 34 seats and 17 tables that was filed on December 4th, 2017. Um, I also understand that there's some opposition here, so I don't know if you'd like them to speak first or if you want us to do a brief presentation. You, you, can, you can go first and then we'll have okay. to come up later. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. So, Mozzarella Holdings, DBA Barano is an Italian restaurant that has been operating at 26 Broadway for approximately two years now. It is a true restaurant concept home by Albert Melio, a chef whose resume includes some of New York City's finest restaurants. I paint this picture for you because I want you to know this is not a bar tavern with, with customers who tend to be loud and obnoxious. This is a fine dining establishment and their, their method of operation that they have on the inside is going to carry out to the outdoor cafe. That outdoor cafe is going to be an amenity to the customers who already like to frequent this restaurant. Um, and it is something that we feel that they have proven in the two years that they've been here with no 311 complaints or violations or concerns from the neighbors that have been reported is something that we believe that they can operate responsibly. Um, I also want you to keep in mind that six of the tables and 12 of these seats are within the applicant's own property line. This means that only 22 of the seats actually extend onto the public sidewalk cafe space. This application was also presented to Brooklyn Community Board 1's DCA SLA subcommittee on January 30th, where they received an approval. This approval was upheld by the full board on February 13th. The group also attended Brooklyn Community Board 1 for their alteration application to extend their liquor license to include their outdoor cafe within the license premise. Once again, the subcommittee voted to approve this application and the full board upheld this decision on March 13th with a 21 to 14 vote in favor of Verano. At these meetings, my clients presented the board with 113 signatures in support. We had also sent these signatures, these petition signatures to the council members last night, so you should be in receipt of them, and we also presented them to Mr. Levin. I do have copies if anyone needs to look at them. Um, these petition signatures are from residents of the neighborhood. Additionally, two community leaders, Jose Leon from St. Nick's Alliance and Dana Rackland from NYC Together, both attended the meeting to offer their support. The support for this application from not only residents, but from community organizations that work with and understand the needs of South Williamsburg demonstrate that these operators would, re would responsibly operate their sidewalk cafe. Um, we also did meet with Council Member Levin on March 13th to speak about the application, and he suggested that my client attempt to speak with additional community groups who were opposed to the cafe. We made it known that there have been several attempts to reach out to the community and we haven't gotten much interest in, in coming to an agreement on anything or in speaking in general. I also like to point out that my clients didn't take this lightly and that we filed this application on December 14th and they started petitioning and meeting with residents approximately two months prior to the submission of the cafe. So they really, they really did make an effort in getting the word out and meeting with people and addressing any concerns that they might have had. Um, so we obviously tried and agreed with Mr. Levin's suggestion that 
you know, meeting with the community would be to everybody's benefit, but we did not, we did not um, receive any response in regards to these meetings. This update was sent to Le Mr. Levin's office on Friday. Since then, I think there's been um, some more communication with some of the groups that we've re reached out to, so we're hopeful that we can meet in the future because obviously this is, this is their restaurant, it's in this neighborhood, and nothing ends at this meeting here, so if there's gonna be a continued line of communication, that would be in everybody's best interest. Additionally, I want to point out that they are zoned for this cafe. Um, New York County has held that a determination to not deny a sidewalk cafe based on community opposition alone is arbitrary and capricious. The argument that it is that if there is if it's an area is zoned for a certain use, then it has already determined the permitted use is in quote harmony with the general zoning plan and will not adversely affect the neighborhood. That being said, my clients have demonstrated that being a good neighbor has been and will continue to be an important part of their business. For this reason, it is important for me to point out that they have already made a number of concessions. One, they have stipulated with Brooklyn Community Board One that they will close their cafe Sunday to Thursday at 10.30 p.m., Friday and Saturday at 12 a.m. Brooklyn Community Board One typically requests the closing of 11 and 1, so these hours are well within what the typical cafes in the neighborhood are, and there is one across the street, a sidewalk cafe, and then there are two more down the street at 81 Broadway and 85 Broadway with like 22 seats and 16 seats. Um, so these are cafes that are close by, they're already in the neighborhood and they were already approved. Um, and so it, it seems that this neighborhood is, is doing fine with the cafes that are currently there. They also agreed to have no music outside. They agreed to only install ambient lighting. And they also agreed to install umbrellas for soundproofing after they've heard the suggestions from community board members at Brooklyn Community Board One. Lastly, there's something to be said by the fact that 12 of the seats within the cafe are within their own property line. They could have put these out a year or so ago without going through any of this process, but wanted to establish a reputation as good operators before going for any outside space because they understand that though they're zoned for a sidewalk cafe, they, this is something that people can be concerned of and they want to prove that they are good operators. Um, in conclusion, this is an application that received an outpouring of support from residents and community groups alike. It has had no 311 violations or complaints about their establishment, and they gained approval from Brooklyn Community Board 1 for both aspects of this application. For all these reasons, we would ask that you vote to approve this. Did you guys have questions for us? We'd like to hear from Councilman Reynoso. <coughs> Welcome. How are you doing today? Uh, very familiar with the establishment. It is in Council Member Levin's district, but he is my neighbor. Um, so I, I've actually been here before. Um, I do want to say uh, early on in the process of the, the actual uh, restaurant being open, I was contacted as well to see if I had any questions or concerns. And I just want to say that my relationship with the owner and with the team has been um, second to none. I really feel like you've been responsive. Um, even though I'm across the street, uh, you, you took the time to also meet with me, considering that some of my constituents were, could be affected. So I just, uh, again, uh, noting that Community Board 1 was supportive uh, and your history uh, so far, um, you know, I, I definitely see uh, this alongside Broadway, and I want to be clear, this is Broadway, where it's um, commercial establishments all throughout the first floor um, on both sides. Um, you know, I do think it, it, it would be an ideal an ideal application. I hope that you find the time to meet with uh, Council Member Levin and that you address all his issues because I do think that this would um, be a, a positive thing for our neighborhood um, to continue to see, especially restaurants along Broadway, th to thrive, um, considering the climate we're in when it comes to these small businesses being able to succeed. But uh, it's nice to see you here, um, and hopefully after um, a positive recommendation from Council Member Levin, we could see this move forward. So thank you. Council Member Levin. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you very much for, for coming in today. I want to thank you for uh, meeting in my office earlier um, this month. Um, a couple of questions uh, just about the, the uh, parameters. Um, would this be, this is, uh, as you said, there are um, a certain number of, of seats you could do as of right, right now. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and um, beyond that, uh, the dimensions of the, past the property line, do you know what the dimensions of the sidewalk are? It's like nine feet by 33 or something like that. Um, we have plans and stuff up here if you guys want copies. So so the just to be clear, so your building line goes and then beyond that six feet to the property line, is that correct? Correct. And then beyond that to the end of the sidewalk is another nine feet? 
Yeah, it's like eight and nine inches. So little, okay, eight eight feet and nine yeah. inches. So um, uh, so in that in that area, um, so that 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 eight feet, um, is that um, is there is there a, a significant amount of foot traffic that um, that happens on that side of the street or, or on the sidewalk there? Unfortunately not. I mean, we're all the way on the end of Kent by the water. Mm -hmm. We came down because we knew what's going on in the neighborhood. Sorry. Sure. If you could identify yourself for the record. Please. Oh, my name is Albert Demeglio. I'm one of the partners. I'm also the chef. Um, we basically came down to that neighborhood because it's it's a growing neighborhood. There's so many more people coming to the neighborhood. I mean, when we when we first started, we knew there was about five thousand people like. 200 feet away coming to the neighborhood. Now that's becoming more and more, which is a dream. Um, but when we went down there, the only access to us is one bus and basically the JMZ, which is about a 15 minute walk. Mm -hmm. um, we've managed to survive for two years, which is great. Um, but it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle, you know, to be honest. And um, the whole reason the outdoor ca cafe came to be is it's, it's an extension to a restaurant and in the summer, we slow down. We slowed down pretty bad last year. Um, actually, for the past two years in the summer, because everybody goes to the outdoor cafes. Everybody wants to sit outside. Everybody's in a New York City apartment. We know what that living's like. Um, and the minute you can go outside, get some fresh air, get a good meal with some good operators, um, that's what happens. And we lose some of our customers to that. So um, we have an amazing staff. Last year, we had to trim some staff. This year, I don't want to trim some staff. I would like to keep the staff I have, maintain the current pace we have, employ more locals, because that's kind of in our business plan. Not only like food is local, we get local aprons, local soap, local everything, because that's what a community is about. A community is about a bunch of people of different backgrounds coming together to support one another and help help grow. And that's what we're here for. Um, I mean, you could, you could Google us, you could say anything, you could ask us questions. We are who we are. There's no, no pulling a punch. I've been doing this for about 25 years now. Uh, good, bad, I, I love it. You know, I've been tortured. I've tortured my family doing this. I have three kids at home that, you know, love to see daddy go to work and do something good. Um, but the whole, there's not a lot of foot traffic, back to your point. Mm -hmm. um, so anything we can do to help that, that's what we're here for. We're here to help thrive a business because if there's new residents coming to the neighborhood, you need commerce in the neighborhood. You need people where they can go eat, shop, mm -hmm. and enjoy themselves. Otherwise, why would people move down there? You know, I- it, Sorry, if, I, if you don't mind. Go. Uh, so um, we've heard from uh, the Neighborhood Association, um, the Lower, Lower Broadway Association, and, and, uh, and residents of the building um, expressing uh, their opposition to um, to the, an extension of the sidewalk cafe permit, um, is there? Have have you met with particularly residents of the building in which you are located? Yes, we met with them. We asked them what we can do. Um, we told them we're capable of having forty-seven seats outside. We only reduced it down to thirty-four. What else can we do? And basically, the answer was nothing. And that it's not for me. It's not a fair answer as a business person. Mm -hmm. There's there's concessions to be made. I we could have put out twelve seats. We didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know any other business person that wouldn't just put those 12 seats out immediately. We didn't. We, we held back money to appease the neighborhood. And now, two years later, we need it. So now we're asking for help. And the community board did also ask the residents that came in opposition at the actual meeting if there was some compromise that could be met. And everyone said, no, no compromise. We don't want a sidewalk cafe. So there really wasn't a lot of talking um, and communicating with us on what we could do to make make this better for them. Um, great. Thank you very much. I think we're going to be hearing from them next time. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, we're going to move on to the next panel. Um, David, Len, oh my goodness. Len, 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 Len Sorry. Chelsea Goodman, Jordan Botcher, Moish Lefkowitz, and we've been joined by Councilmember 
uh, Lanceman and Council Member Torres. If you could just state your name. Sure. Good morning. My name is Amy Lauer. I'm sorry, you have to pick the mic. Yep. Good. Can you hear me? <laughs> My name is Jordan Botcher. I'm here on behalf of the residents of 26 Broadway. Um, so as you heard from the restaurant, we did actually have a meeting with them um, a couple of months ago. and we attempted to figure out what it was that they were offering um, to try to mitigate the concerns that we had. And basically, um, I'll just go over what the concerns of the residents in the building are first, and then we can talk about that meeting a little bit. Um, primarily, our concern is a noise issue. Um, the building is fully glass fronted. I don't know how many of you are familiar with what, what the building looks like, but the entire facade is glass and was not constructed to handle a lot of ambient noise. Um, we currently hear a lot of street noise from um, people down below on the street, from the sidewalk cafes across, from the restaurants, the bars, all of that at night. We have, if you look at the presentation um, on the slide that is titled Noise, you can see what the building looks like. And you can see we've blocked out for you where the bedrooms are in the two buildings adjacent to and above the restaurant. And in those apartments in the bedroom lines, um, on the floor, the second floor right above the restaurant, there are two children ages three and nine. Um, in 20 Broadway on those first two floors, there are two more very young children. In that line of bedrooms in 26 Broadway directly above the restaurant, there are four more kids, um, including I have two of my own, uh, ages one and three. And frankly, it's difficult for them to sleep at night. We have the windows conduct sound all the way up and down, um, and noise also comes in through the HVAC units. So we currently do hear the patrons of the restaurant. It's not bad at all, um, but we do hear them coming in and out of the restaurant at night. And uh, we appreciate that the restaurant's willing to move the time up half an hour, but frankly, the kids go to bed at 7.38, and it's you know, 12.30 versus one doesn't make a huge difference for us on that front. Um, the Sidewalk Cafe is gonna introduce a lot more noise for us. There's not really much that can be done and that was part of the issue at the meeting that we had with them was, you know, you can put umbrellas, but the restaurant admitted that that's really not gonna do much to temper the noise that we're gonna hear inside, inside the apartments. Um, there are other sidewalk cafes around. Uh, as far as we can tell, they are not located inside buildings that look anything like or are constructed anything like ours. So that's, the noise is really the biggest issue that we have. Um, there are a couple of other concerns. One of them is a safety issue. There are just gonna be a lot more people loitering in front of the building. We don't have a doorman. We don't have, you know, we, sh we share uh, entries with the restaurant and with a lot of young kids that live both in the building and on the block, um, increasing just sort of the number of people standing in front of our building late at night is, is another concern. Um, there are, I think, over 200 children that live on this block and they do use the sidewalk as a play area. And um, you were asking about foot traffic, maybe there's not foot traffic from around the neighborhood, but the residents of that block really do use the sidewalk. Um, and it is sort of like a meeting place for the kids and an area for them to play. So having that area blocked is gonna greatly impact um, how they associate with one another. Um, we have an, an additional concern about smoke. Um, this might be something that we could address with the restaurant, putting in some measures, but um, you know we're concerned that in the summers we won't be able to have our windows open because the smoke from the sidewalk cafe is gonna be coming directly up and there haven't been things put in place to, to handle that either. Um, I think that's maybe a lesser concern at this point. 
um, and one that could be addressed. Councilmember Peter Koo just introduced a bill, I think, to ban smoking on all sidewalks. So <laughs> that that building. would help us. <laughs> we we might be good there then. We'll see where um, that goes. So, so we've, I know the restaurant said that they had a petition with a certain number of signatures. We also have a petition signed by 199 people, um, and those are all residents and people who live directly on, in the, in the neighboring buildings and on that block. Um, so the opposition in the immediate neighborhood is pretty significant. Um, anything you guys want to add? Hi, <clears throat> I'm David Lantelm, also a resident of 26 Broadway, and I just want to, um, I, I know that uh, Al had brought up uh, the issue of um, that uh, it it's sounds like it's imperative to keep the restaurant uh, fully capacity to be able to have an outdoor cafe, and, and, and the fact is, is that Actually, Barano is quite a successful restaurant. And when we, when we met with Al, he was very open in saying, you know, we have, uh, we serve 200 dinners uh, a night on the weekend. So uh, it certainly it, it, it is, it, it has proven itself that it is a very successful restaurant. I don't think the livelihood of the restaurant is going to hinge on an additional uh, you know, dozen or so tables uh, outside, and just the community impact of that seems very disproportionate. That that uh, the the entire building uh, will be affected. The building next door, the 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 uh, the block in general, and um, to to just to be able to have that incremental uh, income at that time, it just seems to it just seems that it is a very unfair, uh, really burden on 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 the residents, uh, both immediately in the building and surrounding buildings. Um, yep, and the, the only thing that I would add is that we Can understand you, you that there is- Can you state your name, please? I'm sorry? Can you state your name? Oh, I'm sorry, my name is Chesley Goodman. I also live at 26 Broadway. Um, I would say that w you know we do understand that there is a certain amount of tables that are allowed outside, and you know if the hours were shorter, um, that would certainly disrupt the children less from sleeping. I mean, if you owned the apartment on the second or the third floor and you had children, this would probably be a concern of your own. Um, so, you know, if the hours were shorter and there were less tables outside rather than 34 seats, which is quite a few for someone who may live on the second floor or the third floor or the fourth floor and up, um, you know, it's, it's really the noise. So it would be one thing if we had people during the day, during brunch, um, during earlier evening hours frequenting the restaurant and we're very happy to support that but um, you know when it comes to the later hours and some of the noise on the weekends that's pretty late um, and will disrupt the families in the building is there anyone else testifying My name is Moshe Lefkowitz. I am old. I'm, I'm 11 years old, and I live on 30, uh, 32 Broadway. I take school very ser seriously, and I always, always make a special effort to attend. The reason I am here at the time that I normally be in school is because ever since I heard about the outdoor cave that is about to open up ne right next to my door, right next to my house, I am devastated. Since that, then I am finding it hard to concentrate on my studies, knowing that my outlet and highlight, which I look forward all to all winter long, to ride my bike on the sidewalk and play in my in my front time with my family and friends, will freely s secure that um, that I am close to home. The about to be, to be taken away from me. I am here to represent, represent all my fellow, all my fellow neighbors and friends on my block, who are living, who are living in small crowd apartments with large families, who desperately, desperately need the, the living space on free in freedom. 
is used is used uh, as the as the privacy and security. Please, I beg of you. We need it for our health and sanity. Don't be cruel to us by taking it away. Please respect 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 our needs and our rights and reconsider reconsider before taking and and further action. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your testimony. I just, uh, a quick question. So, um, I think you've laid out. Um, uh, the case why you think that this is, is, is not appropriate in this instance. <coughs> um, uh, are you, um, I, I, do you, do you sense some uh, impact right now from other sidewalk cafes in the area or, or just kind of the, the other unenclosed um, uh, eating areas across the street or is that too far away from, from kind of where y your residences are? From a noise standpoint, we, we are impacted by that. Um, we do hear, especially on weekends, we do hear the patrons of those restaurants. We hear um, people who are going to Giando down on the on the water, right, mm -hmm. when they park in the middle. And so, yeah, we, we do hear that noise. Um, and the concern is really that's going to be magnified tenfold by having that directly below us and mm -hmm. sort of on a continuing basis. The, the noise... Um, across the street and from the other sidewalk cafes comes, but it's sort of in waves. It's as people are arriving and leaving and all of that. Um, having 30 whatever people sitting directly below our windows, mm -hmm. chatting later. And, and listen, I, I go to sidewalk cafes as well, and I don't think about what's happening above me. You just don't, and mm -hmm. I, maybe now I will, but um, when you're there and you're with your friends, it's going to be very hard to for s someone from the restaurant to come outside and say, hey, keep it down, please be quiet, whatever, whatever. And that's not why people are there. So I, I think, yeah, that's it's a concern that it's going to be magnified. And how many how many families, again, are in the building, do you know, in 26 Broadway? Uh, in the building as a whole? At least 10. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, at least 10. Yeah, at least 10. Directly in the line directly above, um, there are three or four families with kids. Okay. Um, and if, do you know how many units are in the building? 35. 35, okay. Um, and be, I mean, I'm looking at the, so the glass facade. Obviously, it's not a, a, a significant sound insulator in terms of... Right. Uh, or any kind of... Buffer. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it just wasn't constructed to mm -hmm. handle that kind of noise. And that is what it is. And to the, the young man's point just now, so uh, that just testified, is that is that area in front used by children often as the sidewalk as, you know, throughout the summer months in terms of whether it's, you know scooters or, you know, just uh, kids hanging out uh, doing their New York City. Yeah, I mean, on any thing. given day when I come home from work um, around 7, I see 15 kids out there on their pedal bikes or scooters or whatever just playing or people drawing with chalk or, right, you know, so I mean, my, my kids, my, my oldest kid has been out there with chalk drawing on the sidewalk as well. And if there's, yeah, if there's uh, eight feet of right now beyond the property line, that would take up a significant portion. The, the the requested sidewalk cafe would take a significant portion of that eight feet, I imagine. The plans that we've seen look like it takes it away almost entirely in that area. There still would have to be some passable, but it wouldn't right. be any space for children to, to play or anything like that. Um, okay, I thank you very much for your testimony. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Council Member Reynoso. Yeah, you, can you say, I, I have a couple questions that I wanted to ask. And sure, sorry. Uh, the restaurant didn't, pour, didn't get any cute kids to testify. <laughs> There's no way you're going to blame him without those cute kids. Um, he did a very good job, by the way. Good job, young man. Um, <laughs> I, I, wanna, I wanted to ask, so this is Broadway. Um, I'm, I'm the council member south of, uh, well, north of Broadway in this, in this case. Uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a large uh, supermarket across the street from your building. There is Patricia's. Uh, there's restaurants al lining up the entire block all the way through. There's businesses, if not restaurants, there's businesses that people frequent um, constantly. It's a, it's a, the zoning makes it so that every single, uh, all the first, the entire first floor of Broadway has to be um, businesses uh, and that everything above it would be 
would be could be residential. Um, it's also Broadway, which means the street itself means the, uh, the traffic that you get on that corner on Kent Avenue, which is a truck route, and you guys are in walking distance of that. You have one of the largest restaurants in in uh, Giando's on the Bay on the corner as well. Giando on the water on the corner as well. We're talking about a lot of stuff going on here. Um, it, it, it's uh, it's almost as if there was an intention through the zoning to make this a commercial strip or a commercial district or friendly to commercial uh, businesses. Um, in your case, uh, it, it kind of speaks against that, right? It, it's saying, um, you know, we, we want to limit what we do to these commercial businesses um, because we live there. Uh, we didn't do, you know, the, the building owner didn't do a good job with the soundproofing, so we have issues with sound. The smoking, I want to be honest, um, th you can't smoke in a sidewalk cafe, you can't smoke inside of a restaurant. The only time they could possibly smoke, they would have to walk outside and stand in a corner, which they could designate an area. But any any resident of the city of New York could stop in front of any building and start smoking. That is, I, I find that, um, you know, it's not the restaurant's fault, I guess is what I would say. Um, also, I would consider that restaurant a, a, this is not like a brunch spot where people are drinking up mimosas and throwing them down and making noise. This is considered, this is actually a pretty high-end restaurant. Um, when I passed by and the time I went, it was actually a restaurant where, uh, you know, it's an older crowd, it's more formal. You know, I just don't see this being one of those places where we're gonna have, you know, the $25 bottomless brunch. I just don't see that happening. Um, so, uh, and then when we talk about, uh, they could have had a, a, a sidewalk cafe last year. They could have had it whenever they wanted, considering what was as of right, the as of right portion of it. And, and they held back on that because they wanted to show that they can be good neighbors first. And for two years, they didn't put out even their as of right amount of tables and chairs in an effort to show that they can be good neighbors, they can listen, and that if there were any issues, they can address them. No 311 complaints, uh, support by the community board, um, you know, everything that we hear speaks of a good neighbor. Um, people would kill for these type of restaurants to be underneath their buildings as opposed to other ones that we might see. Um, uh, you know, for me, just knowing this area, seeing the community board support, considering the record that they have as a restaurant, I just, I just find it that we can't come to a compromise here. Maybe it's not 34 chairs, maybe it's 20, uh, 20 tables or, or whatever it is, uh, 20 chairs but that you have a discussion so that we can find somewhere in the middle where it isn't that they're building as of right, but also maybe not building out to the capacity that they want, but at least a conversation to be had. They're, they're putting out umbrellas. Like these are things I never even heard about, umbrellas to try to dampen noise. I, I just really feel like uh, considering who they are in the community, and I wanna be honest, they have a record in the community too. There are folks that um, uh, sponsor uh, young men of color that are working with police department um, in an effort to, to help, um, to, uh, address recidivism and troubled students in schools. These are people from the community that actually go out and, and are helpful. So when I see this here, um, I, get a, I get concerned that there wasn't a compromise made and that I'm hoping maybe that could be something we talk about as, as opposed to uh, objecting to, by any other means, a completely legitimate uh, request and, and, and fair request by this restaurant. Um, so again, I'm, I'm very concerned about the not being able to meet in the middle um, here uh, and figuring out a way to address this issue. Um, and it kind of speaks also to our land use problem that we have. These are competing uses here that make it so that either one, the residents are not happy, or two, the businesses might not be able to succeed in the summer months, in Williamsburg of all places, um, on Kent Avenue of all places. Like if we can't do it there, then where can we make anything happen, right? Uh, it's very concerning just in general, and I'm hoping that in time, you guys can sit down and come through a compromise where both sides are happy and it looks like they work together. Because right now it seems like there's a line drawn and both sides are against each other. And, and I, don't, I just don't think that's, that's, a, that's fair. Um, I, I don't think that we are not open to compromise. So you said a lot of things there which I can address each one individually. Um, following the meeting that we had with the community board, we did also send a letter to uh, Councilman Levine's office to ask for several concessions uh, that we would consider. Um, but when we met with the restaurant, they were not willing to make any concessions and told us that there wasn't really anything that they could do to address our concerns. So. What were those concessions? Can you speak to those concessions? Um, shortening the hours um, so they we would not have noise that would be late and disruptive to. What were the hours that you were recommending? Uh, nine o'clock during the weekdays, 10 o'clock on the weekends, 
um, less tables. So as you suggested, um, you know, this, if approved, would be the largest sidewalk cafe in all of South Williamsburg. So we don't really see why it's necessary to take a, a, a large amount of chairs and tables outside the, the setting up. What, what was down. the recommendation of, of chairs and tables? Your we recommendation? Have a recommendation. Um, at that time, we were not aware that they were able to have tables outside, um, and they hadn't communicated that to us. Uh, but, I mean, six tables and... 12 chairs is one thing, uh, 34 seats and 17 tables is But what was your recommendation, I guess is what I'm asking. I want to hear your recommendation. You said that you recommended less tables and chairs. What was the recommendation that they objected to? They didn't make a recommendation, nor did we. You, you just said that you asked, you, you talked to them about less tables and chairs. You made mention to We did not that. choose a specific number. To you just said it. less. So and it's a blanket recommendation that we yeah. come try to come to a compromise on fewer tables. There was no specific proposal that was made as to a number of tables. And they objected to uh, having a conversation with you about those numbers, uh, tables and chairs. So th they said, no, we don't want to have a discussion about lessening the tables and chairs that we, we want to put up front. We don't uh, know that they objected. We just never heard. Yeah, it's it's interesting. There, there was a... A claim that they had tried to reach out to us multiple times. Uh, there's one meeting that I was aware of. There was no other communication from them, um, and I think they've been widely aware of which residents have been concerned about the noise. So um, I'm not aware of any of those other times that they reached out to us. Um, so we weren't able to make a concession, nor did we think that they were willing to make a concession to negotiate with us. So I think it's like a lack of communication maybe here that could have probably got us to a better place than where we are today. Uh, but again, I just really feel like this is this is a failure on many parts, not yours. I'm saying city zonings that don't are, are competing interests uh, and maybe uh, a, a system in here in approving sidewalk cafes that didn't allow for a discussion to be had between the folks that would oppose it and the folks that are looking to support it. Um, it, it it's a con it's concerning overall. But again, this is Broadway. And if we can't do it on Broadway um, on off of Kent, then it's just very it's very difficult to see us build sidewalk cafes anywhere in Williamsburg, so, yeah. You know, I think if you look around the building and around the neighborhood, you'll realize that there's no other building like this that has a restaurant in it. We have not found one in the neighborhood, so there's really no glass-fronted building that has been constructed that accommodates a restaurant. I do think that the restaurant has done some things to help retrofit this, um, this restaurant in order to be acceptable to the residents, including soundproofing inside and also um, in ventilating their um, yeah, but the, the glass building code. is not to their fault, right? Like that's the con whoever the owner of that building yeah. decided to construct it of glass. Everybody else maybe on Broadway has brick buildings. Like we d we just don't know. Uh, again, I think the circumstances just call for for like a, a look at what we're doing here when it comes to denying sidewalk cafes on Broadway off of Kent in Williamsburg. Like what message that sending? Like if you can't do it there, you really are going to be shutting this down. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on this item? Seeing none, uh, I will now close the public hearing on this item, and we will now move on to our votes. Uh, LU 36 is the 21st East uh, 12th Street parking garage application. This is an application for a special permit to allow for uh, an attended parking garage with a maximum capacity of 187 spaces. The garage will be located on the ground floor, cellar, and subcellar of a of a 21-story mixed-use building at 21 East uh, 12th Street in Councilmember Rivera's district in Manhattan. We will be voting to modify the application to reduce the number of parking spaces at the garage from 187 to 150. The application has committed to the applicant has committed to reserving 50 of those parking spaces for car share vehicles and has also agreed to increase the number of bicycle spaces available to the public. In addition, for a three-year period, um, discounts to local residents will be available for parking of cars. Last, the application has the applicant has agreed that the retail program will concentrate on smaller format stores. Uh, finally, we will be voting to approve LU 37 the 35 Underhill Avenue rezoning. This application would uh, change an existing R6B zoning district to an R6A uh, C24 district on, prop on the property located on 35 Underhill Avenue. 
in Brooklyn. Uh, the change in zoning district would allow the existing six-story building on the site to convert its ground level parking space spaces to commercial space fronting on Washington Avenue. This application is in Council Member Cumbo's district. Uh, this application has the support of Member Cumbo and uh, we will also now be voting to uh, disapprove uh, LU44, the Burano Sidewalk Cafe, which was uh, which we held a hearing on um, just now, <coughs> and we will now uh, move to vote on approving LU37 Underhill uh, to approve and the modifications I have described. LU36, 12th Street um, Special Permit, and to disapprove LU44, the Burano Sidewalk Cafe. Uh, are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Council Member Rivera. Yes, um, thank you so much, Chair Moya. And just a couple quick comments on the 12th Street Garage. Um, typically, you know, in our communities, we're, we are trying to alleviate congestion and take care of the traffic issues. And I believe that the operator of this garage, who was previously there, um, has entered into a good jobs contract, but is also trying to offer an amenity to residents. I want to add in addition to um, some of the things you mentioned in terms of coming to an agreement that they will be offering a 50% discount on monthly rate for bicycle parking as we try to promote green infrastructure in our community and our city. Uh, they're also going to be investing in streetscape maintenance and improvements for programming that supports small businesses in the area adjoining the site. And the permit issued pursuant to the application will be conditioned upon the satisfaction of the foregoing items that are included in this agreement by the current and the future garage operator. So I want to thank you all for, for your help in, in coming to an agreement on this garage. And thank you, Chair Moyer, for allowing me to make a few comments. Thank you, Councilwoman Rivera. Um, we are going to now move for uh, the council to please call the roll. Chair Moya. Uh, so we're going to go. Um, a single vote for I is to approve a, those modifications. A single vote for I is to approve uh, the modifications. Approve the combo. Approve the combo. Uh, and approve its modifications. And approve the modifications for Councilwoman Rivera's. And to disapprove the sidewalk. And to disapprove uh, the sidewalk cafe. Chair Moya. Aye. 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 Constantinides. Aye and all. Lansman. Aye. Aye. Levin. Commissioner, can you explain my vote? Thank you. Uh, uh, I just want to thank uh, everybody that came out on this hearing today. I want to thank Barano as well for uh, engaging with us and for going uh, uh, through this process. Um, what my recommendation is at this point is um, to, to, to vote to disapprove. Let's see, you, there is an as of right sidewalk cafe that you can do of uh, six tables um, that is on your property line. Let's see how that goes. If, um, if at a future time we want to uh, revisit the issue, um, I'll be here for the next three and a half years um, uh, as council member, hopefully. And, um, but I think that um, hearing from residents of the building, understanding uh, what it means for families that live um, there and adjacent, um, I think, um, uh, that um, as uh, as difficult as this is, because um, I do appreciate the the difficulty that it goes into operating a small business and a restaurant, um, that uh, that it makes sense right now to disapprove this application and um, and see how it goes from here with the with the as of right sidewalk cafe that you're allowed to do. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. And I vote aye on all. Reynoso. I vote aye on all with the exception of land use number 44, in which I vote no. Rivera. Aye on all. Torres. Aye on all. Gradenchik. Aye on all. The land use items are approved by a vote of eight in the affirmative with zero negative and zero abstentions except for land use item 44 which was approved by a vote of seven in the affirmative, one no, and zero abstentions, and all land use items are referred to the full land use committee. That concludes out uh, the meeting for today. Thank you all for attending. This meeting is adjourned.